year five and six, so today I'll be reading you The Tale of Samuel Whiskers or The Roly Poly Pudding and it's by an author who helped preserve the Lake District. Um, she's called Beatrix Potter. So let's begin. Once upon a time there was an old cat called Mrs Tabitha Twitchit who was an anxious parent. She used to lose the kittens continually and whenever they were lost they were always in mischief. On baking day, she deter was determined to shut them up in a cupboard. She caught Moppet and Mittens, but she could not find Tom. Mrs Tabitha went up and down all over the house, mewing for Tom Kitten. She looked in the pantry underneath the staircase, and she searched the best spare bedroom that was all covered up with dust sheets. She went right upstairs and looked into the attics, but she could not find him anywhere. It was an old, old house full of cupboards and passages. Some of the walls were four feet thick and there used to be queer noises inside them as if there might be a little secret staircase. Certainly, there were odd little jagged doorways in the wainscot and things disappeared at night, especially cheese and bacon. Mrs Tabitha became more and more distracted and mewed dreadfully. While their mother was searching the house, Moppet and Mittens had got into mischief. The cupboard door was not locked, so they pushed it open and came out. They went straight to the dough which was set to rise in the pan before the fire. They patted it with their little soft paws. Shall we make dear little muffins? said Mittens to Moppet. But just at that moment, somebody knocked at the front door and Moppet jumped into the, uh, the flour barrel in a fright. Mittens ran away to the dairy and hid in an empty jar on the stone shelf where the milk pans stand. The visitor was a neighbour, Mrs Rigby. She had called to borrow some yeast. Mrs Tabitha came downstairs, mewing dreadfully. Come in, Cousin Rigby, come in and sit ye down. I'm in sad trouble, Cousin Rigby, said Tabitha, shedding tears. I've lost my dear son Thomas. I'm afraid the rats have got him. She wiped her eyes with her apron. He's a bad kitten, Cousin Tabitha. He's made a cat's cradle of my best bonnet last time I came to tea. Where have you looked for him? All over the house. The rats are too many for me. What a thing it is to have an unruly family, said Mrs Tabitha Twitchit. I'm not afraid of rats. I will help you to find him and whip him too. What is all that soot in the fender? The chimney wants sweeping. Oh dear me, Cousin Rigby. Now Moppet and Mittens are gone. They have both got out of the cupboard. Rigby and Tabitha set to work to search the house thoroughly again. They poked under, uh, poked under the beds with Rigby's umbrella and they rummaged in cupboards. They even fetched a candle and looked inside a clothes chest in one of the attics. They could not find anything, but once they heard a door bang and somebody scuttered downstairs. Yes, it was infested with rats, said Tabitha tearfully. I caught seven young ones out of one hole in the back kitchen and we had them for dinner last Saturday. And once they saw the old father rat, an enormous old rat, Cousin Rigby, I was just going to jump upon him when he showed his yellow teeth at me and, and whisked down the hole. The rats get upon my nerves, Cousin Rigby, said Tabitha. Rigby and Tabitha searched and searched. They both heard a curious roly-poly noise under the attic floor, but there was nothing to be seen. They returned to the kitchen. Here's one of your kittens at least, said Rigby, dragging Moppet out of the uh, flower barrel. They shook the fl uh, flower off her and sat her down on the kitchen floor. She seemed to be in a terrible fright. Oh, mother, oh, mother, said Moppet. There's been an old lady rat in the kitchen and she's stolen some of the dough. The two cats ran to look at the dough pan. Sure enough, there were marks of little scratching fingers and a lump of dough was gone. Which way did she go, Moppet? But Moppet had been too, too much frightened to peep out of the barrel again. Rigby and Tabitha took her with her uh, took her with oh, sorry if I'm six took with them to keep her safely in sight while they went on their search and you can see there the lady running away the the big rat oh they went into the dairy the first thing they found was mittens hiding in an empty jar they tipped up the jar and she scrambled out oh mother mother said mittens oh mother mother there has been an old man rat in the dairy, a dreadful, enormous big rat, mother, and he's stolen a, pa a pat of butter and the rolling pin. You can see, big rat. Rigby and Tabitha looked at one another. A rolling pin and butter? Oh, my poor son Thomas, exclaimed Tabitha, wringing her paws. A rolling pin, said Rigby. Did we not hear a roly-poly noise in the attic when we were looking into the chest? Rigby and Tabitha rushed upstairs again. Sure enough, 
the roly-poly noise was still going on quite distinctively under the attic floor. This is serious, cousin Tabitha, said Bribby. We must send for John the joiner at once with a saw. Now this is what had been happening to Tom Kitten, and it shows how very unwise it is to go up a chimney in a very old house where a person does not know his way and where there are enormous rats. Tom Kitten did not want to be shut in the cupboard. When he saw that his mother was going to bake, he was determined to hide. He looked about for a nice convenient place and he fixed upon the chimney. The fire had only just been uh, lighted and it was so hot that there was a white choky smoke from the green sticks. Tom Kitten got upon the fender and looked up. It was a big old-fashioned fireplace. The chimney itself was wide enough inside for a man to stand up and walk about, so there was plenty of room for a little tomcat. There you go, you five, you can see him. Just about, he's just looking at the oven there. He jumps right up into the fireplace, balancing himself on the iron bar where the kettle han hangs. Tom Kitten took another big jump off the bar and landed on a ledge high up inside the chimney, knocking down some soot into the fender. Tom Kitten coughed and choked with the smoke and he could hear the sticks beginning to crackle and burn in the fireplace down below him. He made up his mind to climb right to the top and get out of the by the slates and try to catch sparrows. I cannot go back. If I slipped, I might fall in the fire and singe my beautiful tail and my little blue jacket. The chimney was a very big old-fashioned one. It was built in the days when people burnt logs of wood upon the heath. The chimney stack stood up above the little roof like a little stone tower and the daylight shone down from the top under the slanting slates that kept out the rain. Tom Kitten was getting very frightened. He climbed up and up and up. When he waded sideways through inches of soot, he was like a little sweep himself. It was most confusing in the dark. One flue seemed to lead into another. There was less smoke, but Tom Kitten felt quite lost. He scrambled up and up, but before he reached the chimney top, he came to a place where somebody had loosened a stone in the wall. There were some mutton bones lying about. This seems funny, said Tom Kitten. Who has been gnawing bones up there? In... Oh, sorry, year five. My um, my uh, alarm's just gone off. I need to take the dogs out for a walk. Let me just stop it. Alexa, stop. Sorry about that, year five. After this book, I will have to take the dogs out. Um, <laughs> There were some mutton bones lying about. This seems funny, said Tom Kitten. Who has been gnawing bones up here in the chimney? I wish I had never come. And what a funny smell. It is something like mouse, only dreadfully strong. It makes me sneeze, said Tom Kitten. And there you can see Tom Kitten in the smoke. He squeezed through the hole in the wall and dragged himself along a most uncomfortably tight passage where there was, a, was scarcely any light. He, he got his way carefully for several yards. It was at the back of the skirting board in the attic where there was a little mark in the picture. So as you can see there, the room, there's a little map there which shows where Tom Kitten was in the skirting board. All at once he fell head over heels in the dark, down a hole and landed in a heap of very dirty rags. When Tom Kitten picked himself up and looked about him, he found himself in a place that he had never seen before. Although he had lived all his life in the house, it was a very small, stuffy, um, stuffy room with boards and rafters and cobwebs and, and plaster. Opposite to him, as far away as he could sit, was an enormous rat. "'What do you mean by tumbling into my bed all covered with smut?' said the rat, chattering his teeth. Do you see? There's the rat and Tom Kitten. "'Please, sir, the chimney wants sweeping,' said poor Tom Kitten. "'Anna Marie! Anna Marie!' squeaked the rat. There was a pattering noise and an old woman rat poked her head around a rafter. All in a minute, she rushed upon Tom Kitten, and before he knew what was happening, his coat was pulled off, and he was rolled up in a bundle and tied with string in very hard knots. Anne Marie did the tying. The old rat watched her and took snuff. When she had finished, they both sat staring at him with their mouths open. Anne Marie, said the old man rat, whose name was Samuel Whiskers. Am Anna Marie, make me a kitten ro dumpling roly poly pudding for my dinner. It requires dough and a pat of butter and a rolling pin, said Anne and Marie considering Tom Kitten with her head on one side. <gasps> so, year five and six, we're going to stop it there. But it looks like Tom Kitten's got himself into quite a bit of trouble. And I will continue tomorrow. Over and out. Miss Davis.